presenting Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Hey guys, I just got off a Zoom call with Paula, the documentary filmmaker, and Melissa Savella uh, from Helicopter Productions, etc. We been, we are you know, talking about the eventual TV series, and the ideas are amazing. I'm getting really excited about it. Anyway, but hi, Eric, and hi, Denise. Denise Ramon is our co-host today. I'm so excited to have her. Thank you. Eric says, hi, Mama. He says, um, he says that is exciting news about um, the, the, um, the production and everything that you talked about. He's, um, he's real excited about that. He's, um, he's showing me like he's doing his, his hands in the air, like he's pumped up about it. Aww. He's real excited. Well, yeah. Apparently the writer is getting some channeling from you. He so, says yes. He, oh, it's definitely. He's a, a medium. Yeah. He says yeah. definitely, um, definitely. Um, that's how that writer does a lot of his work is through channeling. That is so cool. Well, well anyway, I, awesome. I love you, Eric. He says I love you, Mom. Got, so listen, I got some exciting news before we start. We, I, I, I'm starting to pay a monthly fee um, uh, to add through artificial intelligence translations of closed captions to every video now it's going to be from here on out but we'll try to back up and and do the previous video slowly but surely so we're adding subtitles or captions in many foreign languages in case you guys want to share these videos to people who don't speak english suppose you speak uh french uh, your uh, your french but you understand the all the channeling eric and the atlanta scaler um youtubes in english but you want to share it with a family member or a friend that doesn't speak English. Well, now, now's your chance. So here's how you do it. And I'm going to uh, talk about this um, each time we do a video. If you are watching from a laptop, you know, or a computer, you need to click on the button that has a small gear uh, symbol at the bottom right of the screen. So when the menu pops up, click on subtitles slash CC. Then another menu will pop up with a list of different languages. Other than English, we now have German, Spanish, French, Norwegian, and Italian. And if you want to add more languages, all you have to do is let us know in the comments um, sections below. Now, if you are watching from a smartphone, you will find the gear button on the top right of the screen. The rest is the same. But I've noticed that the CC icon, you have to click on it. So turning the CC uh, the ca- uh, closed captions on and then go to the gear and select and go to um, uh, what uh, the uh, click on captions and then it'll d- demonstrate all the l- languages that you can choose from any of them. So please keep in mind that subtitles are created automatically. Of course, the translation does not always come out perfectly. Still, it gives you an idea. And I, I checked the Spanish and the Norwegian. It seems to be really good. So anyway, that's it. So I just want to make sure that you guys can uh, spread the love around to those who are not English speaking, you know? I mean, we have a duty to serve, right? Okay. That's really uh, cool. So basically, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about our lives, and Eric is going to guide us through this. So, Eric, the mic is all yours. He's like, uh, like he's coming out of, on stage, coming behind the curtains. Is what he's showing me. Um, dun, 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 dun. Like Johnny Carson. Yes. And exactly here's what he's Eric. Me. That's here's what he's Eric. showing me. Exactly like that. Um, you know, he he said the reason why he wanted to talk about this is because he says, you know, it's just our humanness that we start looking at what isn't. And he says, you know, this is this is a very powerful gear right now where we are in. He says, this is about making some, uh, it's about us making changes. And it's, and he said, so it's, this is a, he just keeps saying it's a powerful year. Um, and regardless of what's going on, he says, you know, because there's going to be, there are going to be things that are happening that are not favorable, you know, what we're wanting. But he says it's, and we have a tendency to 
keep our focus on that, whatever happens, the tragedies in that, which we've had some massive shootings in that just recently here in the U.S. And, you know, and he's saying, keep shifting your thoughts onto the goodness that's coming. You know, like um, he says, if, if all you take is like a few minutes out of your day to focus on the goodness that you want to see in your day or, or what it is you want to feel, he says, um, because this is a powerful time of the year to start, he says, really to start manifesting this. And he goes, and as you're really focusing on what's good, and he says, and it can be as simple as your car started today, or um, the hot water lasted with four people taking a shower, you know, start doing that, he says, because that is building the momentum of having things. And then it, it creates a habit. And when you start focusing on the goodness, he says, of what is, um, how do you say, it? start looking at that more, then you're going to start creating more of that. And yes, you will hear about some things that aren't so nice that's going on, but you're not going to be drawn to want to read into more of it. You're going to know like, yes, that is a sad or a horrible or whatever situation, um, but you'll just you'll know you'll start wanting to just put light on it and and keep moving forward and he says and it's hard when you're driving down the freeway and you got three flat tires and uh, three days to payday or something you know he uh, says but in that moment he says you can think about you know um at least it's in the daylight or you know just really draw on the goodness of it he says because some of us will have testing moments, as we want to call it, but it's about um, staying in that, looking for the goodness, he says. And when he says three yeah. flat tires, I'm like, Jesus. Um, what? But at least you didn't crash and die. That is, that is so true. That is so or true. Or my go-to is, hey, we're eternal beings. What's the worst that can happen to us? That's my go-to goodness. Right. And Eric says, you know, this is like a... Um, and he says, you're, he say, he's saying, you're right, Mom. He says, you're right about us being eternal beings. And it's about really knowing that. But, it, you know, sometimes we can get it better than others. But he's saying, you know, this is a real potent time to really focus on the goodness of what's going on. And, and it could be that, like you said, as simple as four people were able to take a shower and we all ha still had hot water. Yeah. Um, and he says this. This is because this is this is a real powerful year. This and he says he knows he says stuff like this probably in the past, but this one is about pushing through all of that um, that sludge that we've been pushing through all yeah. along. Now it's the time to like start pushing that sludge to the side and and really yeah. start focusing on the goodness and. Um, and it could be, you know, like you had a hot meal today or, you know, you were able to pay rent on time or w something simple. <clears throat> or that you haven't smoked a cigarette in a week, he says. Something, you know, something that you're doing as simple as that. And, um, uh, you know, he says, because this is, this is the time to really, as we're pushing through this, because he's shown me 2024 yeah. is supposed to be, a little clearer, he says. Yeah, that's what I understand. That twenty twenty three things are gonna be pretty stagnant. Nothing mm -hmm. nothing really is gonna change much in all sectors of life and the collective. But that twenty twenty four things will start shaking and moving. Right, but he says even though we can't see the stuff changing, it is changing. Yeah. It's just Oh yeah. It's just lining things up, he says. Okay. So uh, yeah. what is it about this time of the year, this January, maybe early February, that, we're, is there, uh, that you're talking about, Eric? Is there some astrology involved here in what you're talking about? Well, he said, yes. You know, he says there's astrology. He, um, the way the he says it's, just the way all the planets have lined up, all everything the way it's lined up. He says, you know, in the, the time of the year, you know, he says, this is a time for um, uh, 
like nesting is what he says. So it's a time okay. for um, just really looking at what you have and looking at the goodness, he said, in nesting. Because um, he says, yes, it has to do with astrology and, and the planets and the stars, all of that, the way it's all aligned in that. Um, yeah. And he's showing me like... Um, We'll get some breathing room in around April, he says. Um, okay. Um, even though this is going to be, um, it can be a challenging year, we're going to have breathers where we can come up for air and breathe and for a while and then get back to work again and then come up and breathe some more and then get back to work again. Okay. Yeah. Anything else on the topic? You know, um He's showing me like, um, you know, he's showing me like some people can do something as simple as writing on a piece of paper, like a word, like they would like to see more of in their life for the day, like so they can write joy and put it into like a glass jar, or a plastic jar, or whatever, it doesn't have to be a jar per se, but in a container yeah. and like you can write, he says like write joy on it and like this is my intent to, to be witness to, to more of today. And he says, and do this, you know, as often as you can throughout the week. And, and um, he said, yes, it would be great if you could do it every day, but, you know, he understands that, you know, things get busy, but, you know, to think of a word like you would like to see more of in your life um, and, um, and doing that. Um, he says, and then also too, he says, um, why you're doing those things or whatever else, looking at the goodness, he says, look to see what it is that you can do, bring the goodness in. And he's shown me, and probably because it's notorious the way the um, the garbage men come down our street and the recycle men that come down our street, they leave the, the cans in the middle of the street almost, you know, and the cars are playing dodge cans, you know, trying to drive around it. And I will sometimes when I see it with my neighbors next door to me and across the street, pull their cans up into their driveway so it's not halfway out in the middle of the street. Because he's saying that when we do in, when we mm-hmm. do things like that, we're not doing it really for the neighbors. He says we're really doing it for ourselves. Oh. And that cre- that energy gets, the more we do things, you know, just simple things like that or whatever it is. He says, we're, we're building momentum for that energy to keep expanding. And when that kind of energy keeps expanding, he says, we're more likely to look at the goodness that's going on. And because he says it is about our perception, how we look at things. And so um, he's saying that we deserve to look at the goodness. We have that, that's our, our birthright to be able to see the goodness that's going on. Of course. Yes. And, and he and says, this is going to help. It. He says, this is going to help lift that veil of, of some people call it darkness. Some people call it, you know, um, what are they? He's saying darkness is what all he's showing me. There's other, there's a lot of things that people are calling it, but the, he says lower energy, um, a lot of people have names for it, he's telling me. But this will help lift that up so we're not seeing through that. It's not going to be hard for us to, to find things that are good to look at. Okay. Interesting. That is. Anything else, Eric, you want to add before we take callers? He says, no, he says, um, no, he says, no. He's, he's ready to take callers, he says. Okay. Awesome. All right, let's take somebody from the 704 area code. Hey there, how you doing? Hello. What's how your are first you? name and where are you calling from? Hi, this is Laura Lasser. I'm calling from Laura, South yes. North Carolina. All right. From so where? The... All right, where are you calling from, Laura? I'm 
Charlotte, North Carolina? Oh, okay. North yes, Carolina. Charlotte. Okay. okay, North Carolina. Okay. Hi, how are you? Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Hi. Yeah, we've been talking about, about email. We've been talking about email. Eric, okay. yeah, go I'll... ahead and ask Eric anything, sweetheart. Okay, I really need some help, y'all. Um, I have been going through a lot of changes um, in the past year and a half that have really shaken my face. Um, I don't know what's going on with me. I've had so many different answers from so many different sides, and I'm mm-hmm. confused and very just, like, unclear about the direction that I need to go now. Um, mm-hmm. I used to be very intuitive, and I feel like my guides are just gone. My body has, like, physically just changed overnight, and I don't know what to do, and I'm wondering what happened. Because when um, when everything happened, and I'll try to be brief, um, basically my no, whole body... Sweetheart. Just tell us what, everything you need to tell us, okay? Okay, basically my whole body went into overdrive, and um, it felt like I had a stroke. But a few weeks later, I went to the hospital... And they were like, oh, no, you're fine. Your brain is fine. You're just under a lot of stress here. Take a pill. And I oh, know okay. that something happened. And nobody can tell me anything. And I'm just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if I'm just in resistance because I'm not understanding what they're telling me. Or I just need clarity on what happened because it's really shaken my whole life. I mean, I had to leave a job because of this, and I had to just start over, and I'm really, really struggling. And, um, you know, before all this, I was very high-functioning. I could do a lot of things. Now, with all this being said, I have cerebral palsy as well, which I know yes. how to live with. I, You know, I've yes. done it for, you know, a long time, and but it just seems like right now everything is falling apart around me, and I don't know how to keep my head above water you know, other than take it day by day. Um, what I'm really looking for is to know exactly what happened so I know how to move forward. Because I've gotten everything from, oh, you're going to early, you're going to early menopause, to you've had a concussion, to you're depressed. You know, I don't know what to think. Yeah. Eric, how can we help and, her? Yeah. And I'm also, I'm, a, I'm sorry, I'm also... Um, interested in looking into the Atlantis Kalara program too, if that's doable for me. Well, Eric says the um, the scalar work would be very good for you, but he says one of the things is he says um, uh, when you said you were high functioning, he says yes you were, but you were also high functioning while you were under a lot of stress, and it, it's okay. just like stress has been um, something that you're accustomed to. So it, 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 we don't realize how stressed we are because it becomes a norm for us. And he said, mm-hmm. so um, he said, the doctors aren't going to be able to see things that haven't come into a physical problem, you know. So um, even though you have symptoms and all this other stuff, if it doesn't come into a physical spot, they're not going to be able to see it. Um, so that's why they're saying this no, this didn't happen. And Eric says, be glad that those things didn't happen. But he okay. says, when you don't, like you, you feel like your guides have left thing and you're were real intuitive, Eric is telling me you're still very intuitive. It's just yeah. that um, there's a lot of um, unsettledness around you. It's like um, when you said take it, the only thing you know to do is take it day by day. And Eric says, that's the only way to take it. He's showing me, um, don't get so focused on what did happen or what did happen or what they're not saying is or something. Just know that something did change within you and just kind of like go with that, knowing that you know that is the truth of what it is. And he says, and then start working on the outside. Um, So he also was showing me too that... um, Whatever how your diet was before, that needs to be, you, you have to change that up some because it's not supporting okay. you. It's not supporting you at all. Okay. So that has changed a little bit. So thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. So he's saying, you know, and, um, you know, this would be a good time for you. Um, he says, like, 
he's saying for you soaking in hot baths, taking a hot bath and that, that would be really good for you to help kind of just ground you and to calm you down, you know. Wait, in, in awesome. what? In, in, in pink uh, Himalayan salt or just plain hot water or he regular said salt? It can be, he said it can be just plain warm water. It can be okay. Himalayan salt. It can be Dead Sea salt. It can be yeah. um, Epsom salt, just something that will help ground you in that. And he's saying, don't focus on what isn't or wondering, trying to figure out what it was. He says, really get your focus on where you are right now, because I feel like there's going to be a big change moving forward for you within the next six months is what he's showing me. And okay. then all, all of this will make sense. He said, oh. don't, he said, don't look at it as something's wrong with you and something is happening to you and it's not right or whatever he says just know everything is happening um there's good things coming from all of this and it will all make sense as you go but it's making you it's forcing you to go inward and this is what's really good because he says you're extremely intuitive and i don't feel like you used it to the degree that your intuitive really is how deep it is Mm. So my my question. Oh, thank you. Um, my next question is: Am I ever gonna feel like my normal self again? Like, am I ever gonna be able to get a job and do all that stuff again? Because right now I'm kind of at an impasse. Like, I'm doing a lot of different things to try to lift myself out of the darkness, so to speak. But I really just want to find me again. You will. He says yes. You will have another job again. He says you may want to start out slow, like not getting one that's so, in, you know. So I, he says intense. So what, okay. what type? What type of work did you do before? I quality assurance analyst for um wow. quality assurance analyst. I really enjoyed it, and um you know while I was there, I was actually getting messages. Um you know on how to do my job, and so like once that stopped, it was like. You know, I, like, literally forgot how to do my job one day, and it just scared me to, you know, scared me a lot. Oh. So I had to, you know, I basically had to, you know, quit on the on a dime, which I'm not happy about because oh. I would never have done that under normal well, circumstances. Well, Eric is saying this is, it's not that you forgot. It's that he's saying, well, yes, you forgot, but it's you it's like you you don't, you know this work. You know how to do this work. Yeah. Whether you get, are getting channeled messages on how to do it or not, you know how to do this work. Mhm. So well, anyway, Eric, I think he. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, go ahead. He says you will find a job. You will get another. You will. Yeah. You will start work. He says you're too young not to work. He's what he. Yeah, saying. and I I think you need to call in kind of on a regular basis and check in with us with Eric anyway. Um, but you know, even if the, to get more practical advice, I think that's probably important. I feel like it is. Can you do that? Okay. Yeah. All absolutely. right, darling. Um, thank you guys for taking the call. Oh, of course. You're welcome. We are. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, now. I have this uh, wonderful woman. Her name is Beth, and she had had three major losses of life. Uh, hmm. uh, you know, we can't uh, get messages from all of them all at once. But her sister Angie, okay, that she and Beth live in, you know, live in Greenville, Mississippi. Um, so I guess she really wants to get a message from her sister Angie, Beth. And Angie, both Greenville, Mississippi. Can you help her, Eric? Can we bring Angie forward for a message, especially if it's a maybe a, a more validating one? Because she's yeah. suffering, having so much loss. Yeah. Well, Eric, um, um, Angie is saying um, it's like I don't know if they had a if there's a party coming up or. There's a so there's some kind of celebration coming up or an anniversary or birthday or something, and Angie says that she's she's going to be there for it. Oh. So 
and how she shows me is she's preparing for it. It's like she's um, getting the tablecloth ready, the, 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 the dinnerware and all of this. So she's preparing for some type of celebration. I don't know if it's a wedding anniversary, a birthday, I don't know, a holiday that they celebrate or something, but there's some, right. and, okay. and Angie says she's going to be there. And, um, she also says that um, sometimes Beth, she's shown me like she does something to Beth's back. I don't know. She like makes it start itching real bad or or feels like something's crawling on it or something. But Angie's saying that that's her that does that to her back. Oh, her it's back. Like, oh, her okay. back. Oh. Yes, to her okay. back. And it's okay. because Angie wants best to know still has her back oh yes and um and she's she um as soon as beth can um she's saying beth is going through a deep grieving period right now but she's with her right now angie's with her right now and um, oh wow and and beth is going to start realizing that she can communicate with them. And Eric is saying he works with Beth a lot to help Beth know that she can communicate with these souls on the other side, these these family members and friends on the other side. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Eric, for that. And I hope that gives Beth some Comfort. Um, all right, we're gonna get to have somebody from the six five one area code. Hi, how are you? Hi, this is Christiana from Minnesota. Hi, Christiana from Minnesota. <laughs> you got a lot of, a lot of people with my husband up there. I know. So, Christiana, how can well, that? well, my husband is Norwegian, so I bet you got a lot of people up there just like him. Yep. Um, Yeah. Um, My question is about, I've I've been told that I have um, fairies that come to visit me. So, um, did you watch our YouTube on fairies and other uh, uh, nature spirits? It was really interesting. No, I haven't. Oh, gosh, it's on the Channeling Eric YouTube channel. Fascinating. And it tells you how to communicate better with fairies and what they want and what they think. And it's really cool. Look it up. It's, I think it's in two or three parts. Nature Spirits on the Channeling Eric YouTube channel. But go ahead. I'm sorry, Christiana. Tell me okay. what you want to hear from Eric. Yeah, I'm just wondering if um, they've received their offering and if they if they came back again to help me sleep and um. Just if there's any information that you have. Eric says that you're very connected to the fairies. The elementals is what I get more so. Yes. Yeah. And um, Mm -hmm. so this is, you know, and because you're so connected to the elementals, the fairies are are here for you. And, yes, they do receive your offering. Um, They did receive it, and they are around you. Um, Yes, they do help you. And I feel like there are you're going to start discovering more about the elementals. And Eric says that's a good video to watch that um, Elisa talked about because you're going to learn more about the elementals in that. And you can even Google about the elementals, but he's telling me that video kind of helps um, to dumb it down so it's not so like, what, you know, complicated to like, this sounds so foreign. It really helps to bring some ease to understanding it. Um, But Eric shows me you really growing more in that area with the fairies and other things that are coming along. And I also feel like you will start getting more into um, uh, learning more of some other parts he's showing me like, um, um, and this may sound so way out there, but Eric is showing me more about the unicorns and the dragons. Cool. Because those, oh, yeah. those things are real. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. maybe interdimensional, but yeah. Yeah. 
Are there any other elementals that Christiana uh, could be connected with? There's so well, many. There's gnomes. Yeah. There's you know, all sorts of stuff. Well, that yes. And Eric says, uh, Eric is showing me. Um, she's connected to the gnomes, but more to like the. Um, um, what do you call those? They're not lizards. I always think they're lizards. they're not, the salamanders. Oh yeah! Oh, like, wow! Yeah. Cool. So, so there's there's a whole another. It's like it's a whole. It's like you are going to discover like a whole another city. You know, it's just like you're just going to discover so much about it because that your energy will is more in alignment with where they are. Well, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah. watch that watch that video, sweetheart, or the the, the series is a series. And then call back and you know, if you have any questions after you digest that information. Okay, thank you. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Eric, how many people listening have connections to the elementals, you think? Oh, he says, you know, we all can have a connection to the elementals. It's just well, I know, but um, how many do already um, uh, have the, of the listeners? Of the listeners? Yep. Yep. He's saying he's showing me about um, he's showing me between fifty and sixty percent. Oh wow! All right, yeah. let's check out the six four six area code. Oopsie, why is it not working? Here we go. Hello. Hi. Hi there. How are you doing? I'm good. My name is Carla. Hi, Carla. Hi. Um, So my question for Eric is, um, I proposed a project uh, where I volunteer, and I'm wondering if they're going to let me do it. Eric says yes, but they're probably going to want to rearrange it a little bit. And, And Eric says just let them know, Eric says, listen with open ears, but let them know that the the design of it and everything else is the, the route that you want to go more so. Like you like their, their ideas are interesting or something, or you appreciate their input, but this is the route you would really prefer to go. But he says, yes, they're going to, they, uh, they like what you've done, but you know, he says, it's kind of like, it's like when somebody does something really good, somebody, you know, they got to put something on it to make it where, like, yeah, we helped with that, you know. Yeah, Which oh, you, I feel that, too. Like, well, we want a little credit for this idea. I feel yeah, that. Totally. Yeah, and Eric says, <laughs> but it doesn't need anybody else's touch. No, no. And the thing is, I, I proposed this idea before a few months back, and it was knocked down for various reasons, so I'm, I'm like trying to reignite it, and that's why I asked, like, are they going to let me do it this time? And there's time pressure because I'm hoping to move, oh. like, so I may not be, you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's number two, actually. Does he see me getting an offer soon? <laughs> I feel like they're going to come. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome. Awesome. Like Eric shows me, like, yeah, it's, yeah, very soon. Good. Oh, All right, thank like you for calling in. Okay. Huh? Say that again? I love the offer on my condo, you mean? I will get an offer soon? Oh, 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 okay. okay. Oh, on your condo. Yes, 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 I meant. Not as soon as you want it, he says. I feel like, and then and, and don't worry about that because you don't want it to come too soon and then other things aren't being aren't you're not going to be able to complete eric says trust and know that the offer is going to come at the right time when it's divine timing man yeah divine timing all right so if you don't see it happening in a month just know it is going to happen it's just not the right time okay um it's already been a couple of months so i'm losing my patience <laughs> just, oh. no, just see it being sold eric says just see it being sold it, yeah. it will it will it will in the right course yeah. it's going to come for it. yep okay all right thanks all right, calling bye 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 okay uh, my clicker is not working very well all right got somebody from the two six seven area code hi there how you doing Hey, thank you. This is Jessica. 
Um, My question is, hey, I wanted to know what's the fastest way to heal the stuff that's going on with my throat. Oh, where are you calling from? I have Pennsylvania. Okay, Pennsylvania. Got it. Your throat. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit more about your throat? Um, there's a couple of growths, like on my trachea, there's like some, it looks like calcium growths or something. It's like, it looks, it just, there's some, yeah, I don't even want to talk about it, but it brings me a lot of like kind of worry, anxiety at times. I, I, like I have a plan of what I'm doing to heal it, but, um, mm-hmm. at other times, like the worry and fear gets really strong. Um, yeah. I'm just wondering what the fastest way to heal it. Yeah. Well, you know, unfortunately, Jessica, when we worry and stress about it, it just kind of makes it larger. Mm -hmm. And and (laughs) I, and I, and I get that, you know, you're trying not to go there, but you can't help it when you, you're seeing stuff and no, no action is happening. You know, you don't see, you're not getting results. Um, Yeah. And Eric is saying, this is where you have to really get into this is you have to get into do you do meditation at all i do i'm actually upping it um all my practices yeah okay because he says really get in there like it, and when the stress and the worry he says it's almost like create a, an invisible um a bucket or whatever and like visualize yourself taking that fear and that worry and putting it in that bucket and that bucket he says and visualize it like that bucket dissolves everything and puts it puts it into light is what he's saying um and just remind yourself you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing and eric says this also too has to do with previous lifetime your throat because oh. you're it, it's like you're also learning to Speak your truth. And speaking your truth doesn't mean screaming and yelling at somebody and telling them they're stupid when, you know, they're doing a dumb thing. Speaking your truth is speaking from your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I, as a doctor, I, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I realized that um, it's really come to light the last, like, couple of days that this is a pattern I have of really being in overwhelm, that, like, so much is going on that I can't comprehend. Like, so many changes have happened over the last nine months, and it's, like, continuing. Mm. And it's like I, I, that's why I think – that's why I know that this also developed is that I was in so much overwhelm. Um, you know, I was having like, I, I, I was constantly moving. I was homeless for the whole time. I mean, technically oh, I still wow. am, even though I'm in a much place oh. now, there was money worries and job worries. And so it was like this overwhelm. And now I just got a job, but there's overwhelm with that because now I have to get into the routine of working like 40 hours a week. Like there's, and it's still so I'm, I feel like I'm repatterning how to not get into overwhelm, and I keep having these flashbacks of how I've been overwhelmed my whole life with different situations. So I just Eric never knew said, it was called overwhelm. Well, well, Eric says instead of looking at how overwhelmed you are with getting back into the patterns of working 40 hours, uh, he says, that, and he's doing his head like that overwhelms me. He's saying to him, he's telling me, but he says. <laughs> Start turning it around and saying, I get to go to work today. I get to put in 40 yes. hours a week. This is going to change the rhythm on how you look at things. I get to go do this, he says. And I get to have a hot shower today. I get to put be here. I get to do this. And as I get to, I get to heal myself. I get to have this meditation. And Eric says, when you're in meditation, be careful that you're not doing it because I have to, I have to, I have to. You're doing oh, yeah. it because you're wanting to do it because this is where you know you find peace. Yeah, and he says, right. so, um, so, so just like I get to go do this stuff, he's saying. It. And I mean, that is way, powerful. Yes. From the, the position. When I to start seeing it like getting smaller. Tracheal, like shrinking. Bron- uh, the tracheal and bronchial calcifications <clears throat> are usually an incidental findings. I don't know if they're on your vocal cords, but if it's on the tracheal cartilage itself, 
it's usually completely benign. Okay, I'm just letting you know. I know it is. I know it is. I've asked that a million times, but when I look in the mirror and I see a bump, it freaks me out. Um, yeah. yeah so to I, you, man. I, I, yeah. Eric, this I, is no, when you start I, giving I, it love. This is when you start nurturing ooh. that part of you. Nurture oh, that part of you yeah. because this is, has been a pattern of yours. He's showing me throughout your life of you not nurturing you. Mm. You, yeah. you, you have a tendency to do for others. And that's why you've had a series of events because you've kind of put yeah. yourself on the shelf. So Eric says, when you see these things, Start nurturing yourself and loving yourself. What about what about throat chakra music via YouTube? Oh, that, that would be good. Crystals. What about putting special crystals, uh, taping it to I've the throat? Been doing the crystal thing. Yes, I've been doing that actually, just intuitively. Okay. These green crystals I have. Good. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What's Eric want to say about that? I've been doing that, and I've been doing a, a, a sound bowl on it, too. That's good. good. Eric says, but it's about nurturing you. All right. Yeah. You can do okay. these outer things, but it's the and inner finding your nurturing. own voice. Finding yes, your own voice. nurturing you. So when you look and you see those on your, your throat and that, Eric says, start putting love into that. Nurture it that like you would nurture a... A, a little kitten, a puppy, or a newborn, or whatever, you know, that you would nurture. Right. He's shown, even shown me a plant. You would nurture. But start putting that nurturing into you. All right, Jessica, thanks for okay. calling. Thank you, Jessica. All right, so we have somebody from the 636 area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hi, Elise. This is and uh, Denise. This is Alyssa from Missouri. Um, I was just trying to see if my mom or Eric has any uh, messages for me or any news about my pregnancy. News about your pregnancy? Did you say plural? Yes. Yes. My pregnancy. Just just one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just one. Because I'm like, is there twins? Um, Not that I know it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I just like so. Um, you know, um, do you feel your mom's presence around you often? Oh, all the time, all the yeah. time. Because she's showing me her with you all the time, and wow, and, and it's just like. You know, you're intuitive now. She says that's really going to kick in overdrive, and it's like because this, you're just gonna, you're just that is just going to really kick in. And she's saying this baby, um, are you not wanting to know the sex of the baby? Um, I just found out, and I was very conflicted about the sex of the baby. Oh, well, that's what you're picking up on. Yes, because I just don't get like, don't say anything, you know, like they're not telling me. Usually, <laughs> and that's something that I'm really good about is being able to tell sex of the babies before the, before anybody else, you know, can tell. But they're wow. like, they're they're not giving me that information. They're just not. so maybe it's, you're picking up on the con- confliction. Yeah, yeah, probably. Well, they're yeah, just, I just found out it was a girl. Okay, and. Yeah, I just um, they're so they're not giving they're not elaborating on that for me. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh, don't go there. The, the, well, they're just not giving me any information. Um, I can say that this is going to be such a magical um, baby, um, oh. and and your intuitiveness is just going to really just flourish because this baby is is so magical, and. Um, mm. And you, it's like y'all are gonna, it's gonna be the three of you, your mom, your baby, and and you, you know, because it, it's just gonna, you're just gonna, you're, of course, you'll miss the physicalness of your mother from time to time, but she's showing me she's gonna be there with you all the time. So you'll oh. have conversations going and stuff. Um, they're not even, they're not even um, showing me the, the color, the energy color of your baby, or nothing. They're, they are just leaving that alone. And I guess so. 
until you can be where you need to be with that information. Or with the sex, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. Because, okay. And the reason why there's a, a, a something going on in there with that, Eric, is it's because it, it, there's something a, there's it's something about within you that needs to like that, yeah. sh- shift in that. And your know, mom says it just stirs up some stuff of her presence not being there. Yeah. Yeah, actually, like, two nights ago, I was like, well, how can I be a girl mom when my mom's not here? Because I only have a boy, and I'm like, who am I supposed to talk to? My mom had two girls, you know, so it really does kind of yeah, she mix does with my emotions. Yes, yeah. and, and that's okay, you know, to be okay with that. Uh, you know, to, to, it's good that you're acknowledging that and to say that because, you know, uh, she said when you get pregnant, you're supposed to be happy and everything's wonderful and not have any kind of those thoughts. And this is this is good that you're talking about this and being this way because then you're not stuffing it and you, and you can let it go and let it not stay with you. But she's telling me you're going to have more than enough assistance with being able <laughs> to raise a daughter. And she's good. also saying it's really no difference. You just give... You give them both love. Yeah, of course. Beautiful. All right, thank you for calling, Beautiful. and good luck. I know. Congratulations, Alyssa. You name her Erica, right? I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we have somebody from the 213 area code. Hi there. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. Where are you, I, who are you, and where are you calling from? Oh, okay. I am Lisa calling from California, and Hi, Lisa. I am calling... Hi, ladies and Eric. I'm calling because I was doing some processes to eliminate um, uh, spiritual inner attachments like um, earthbound spirits and stuff like oh, that. And yeah. I was wondering if I have been successful in getting rid of them. I've just done this in the last few days using some Good. process I saw online, and I just want to know if I'm successful. Eric says yes, but there's a part of you that lacks that um, you don't feel like you have done it. So it's almost like <clears throat> I feel like some more could come back so that you could uh-huh. be 100% sure that, like, yeah, I am doing this. I, I can do this. I, I have these abilities. I know how to do this. Good. Um, so if so what, does she back, need to do? What, what does she need to do to keep those from coming back? Know that she did it. Okay. Know that she, know that she is doing this. She is getting rid of them. That you know. Good. Um, and it's some of it. It's because, and then the reason why they come to her is because they know that she is a vehicle to to transport them to the light. Oh. Oh. Well, that's nice. <laughs> okay. But it's about you I... believing that, knowing that you are doing this and that you can do this. That's nice. That's amazing. That's nice. That is Thank cool. you so much. You bet, sweetheart. Right. Um, All right. We have somebody from the 732 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Yay. Hi. <laughs> this is Melissa hey. from Manchester. Thank you um, so Melissa, much. I'm oh, so happy. Melissa Manchester, yes. How are you, hey, sweetheart? Sending you my hugs and love. I love you guys so much. And because of oh. you all... I have really just been so happy in life. I feel like 2023 is such a great year. I just oh. feel so full of love and happiness and getting back on track and just yay. Amen. <laughs> oh, I'm so um, happy for you. I'm and so I feel cool. like uh, the, my angel team is constantly saying hi. Uh, like Eric said, he was part of my um, spiritual team, and um, I'm seeing angel numbers all the time. I just feel like everything's in line, and this year is going so good. Wow, the reason why so I'm cool. calling, <laughs> thank you. We, the reason why I'm calling is though, I am trying to get my life back on track. When I took right. in my in-laws and I was get their caregiver, um, I also took over all their paperwork and finances and all that. But because I took them in, it was like everything got shoved from one room into another and then shoved from one room to another. And and when they passed, which was last February, it was um, – we've been so disorganized. 
and living with oh, so much stuff and I'm trying to get back on track, I misplaced their will. And I need oh, to boy. finish their taxes for two years and their mm. um, paperwork and all this stuff, but I can't probate the will because I can't find it somewhere in my house. It's so weird. Well, my house know, is not that big. Do you know what the state lawyer did the will? Or no, I have no idea. I put it in a binder, and um, I called one lawyer that was locally to them thinking, you know, and then they're like, we don't hold on to this stuff. It's somewhere in my house. It's in a binder. Oh. I put it in there for safekeeping, and I just yeah. don't know what room it's in. <laughs> so can everyone like, help oh, me, wow. please? <laughs> well, Eric, so Eric is showing me it's like in between a box. So, in, in between a box and what? In, in the room, in the in one of the rooms, like like you have boxes with papers or stuff, you know, is what he's showing. And it's like, it's like it, it fell to the side. And and Eric says, and I don't know. So what are the rooms that you have stuff in? Because I, the, he's showing me it's not. He's not saying it's room one number one or room number two. He's just showing me a room that it's like so. In so rooms got shuffled. Rooms got shuffled around. Right now, I have a room with the piano where my son's, uh, you know, stuff is, and then I have the spare room which used to be his old nursery, and we have uh, things got shoved into the garage and to the master bedroom. So I don't know out of the four places, or the kitchen because that's where I normally do paperwork. But it, it got shuffled all around. So. I just don't know which one of the rooms it's in, and there's just so much stuff that I want to know what room to concentrate on. Eric says Eric, it's fair. Eric, is this is this a is this a group of papers all by itself, stapled or whatever, or is it in a special envelope or a Manila folder? What do you see? Well, Eric says it's a folder because she says it's a folder, and it's still it's, it's in a, what it's she a binder. Put. Yeah, yeah, it's still binder. in that. Yeah, it's still in that. But he's. When you were writing, when you were naming the rooms, I was writing the rooms down, and he showed me spare. Spare room. Mm -hmm. it, now you say it's between a box, but between you have to have another side between a box and a wall. Between oh, two well, boxes. Yeah, it's, he showed me like it could be the box and the wall, or the box and a chair, or something. But it's like leaning. It's like behind a box is what he's showing me. I can't tell if that's another box or a wall. Is it under a box. Uh, no. It's just, is no. it inside of a box? No, it's like it's like it's like she put it on something and then it fell to the side. Oh, okay. says, yeah. So uh, Eric, says, says, when you go there, Eric says when you go there and look for it, just go. I'm only going to spend thirty minutes looking for this and then I'm out. And he says and make sure you time yourself for thirty minutes because he said. When we have a tendency to get real frustrated because we can't find what it is, then yeah. we're, not, we're not seeing it. He said, so time yourself when you go in there so you're not getting frustrated about it. And also ask Eric to help you to channel I, the information. I'm hoping, I'm hoping and I'm just thinking maybe it's not the right time in the universe for me to find it, but... I mean, it's been a year, and I've been trying, and I'm trying to get things taken care of, trying to do the adult thing, all these paperwork and all oh. that, you know, mm. adult stuff. And this is really kind of holding everything up. And I, we, we really would like to kind of, kind of keep keep moving forward in in cleaning everything up. Um, well, can, so this can is, your relatives help with the search? I beg your pardon. Can a relatives help with the search? Well, I would have called in my sister to help me because she's good at things like that, but she's moving and she's only got like 42 more days of doing her own thing. And, you know, oh, yeah. I mean, I would like to, I, I'm the one that put it somewhere. I'd like to be able to find it and not bother anybody. You will. So, well, Eric, would you find it? Eric, Eric says, remember, um, Melissa, this is not a solo journey. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with asking for help. I agree. I think you Thank should you. ask your sister to help, especially if she's good at it. All right, Melissa. Well, first of all, one more Eric. I love one you more guys. Eric. Well, will will yep. Melissa find it eventually? Yes, Eric. All right. He awesome. said yes. Love you, Melissa. Thanks. From Take Manchester. Care, all right. So I got somebody from the six one five area code. Hi there. How you doing? Ah, oh. oh, it's 
can't believe I got on. Oh my god, um, <laughs> I'm so nervous. Oh, I've never, I've nervous. never called in before. Uh, but uh, this is Lori at this is Lori S in Tennessee, and I've got to say a really quick thank you, a really quick thank you first to Elisa and Denise and Michelle and all of the the uh, psychics on uh, channeling Eric, and of course Eric Darling. Uh, very quickly, oh, um, oh, Denise, yes. Denise and Michelle, I'm the crazy lady that's been hounding you for a year and a half with addresses helping me find a lake house. Do you remember me? Oh, when yeah. the yes and no question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guess what? I closed what? on my lake house last April. Oh, well, let me know God. when the party. So let me know when the party is. I'll be there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you to Eric and Denise and Michelle with all the yes and no addresses. You know, is this haunted? Does it have bad juju? Um, that type yes. of thing. Yes, I do. Also, yes. the other thank you goes wow. to Eric, of course, because he rides along with me to the doctors all the time. And in my mind's eye, maybe I'm crazy, but in my mind's eye, I see him sitting in the passenger seat, and he well, he's that. got really long legs. And he puts him up on the dash, and I keep telling him, don't do that. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, I, he touches my left ear all the time. Maybe I'm imagining this, but no. I really he, believe he it. He did that in the car all the time, so, yeah, that sounds right. And that's okay. I feel, Eric, too, is on my left side. Oh, yeah, okay. me too. Me too. Me too. Okay, because yeah. I always hear people say on the right side or whatever, but no, let me I tell you, feel him on Alisa, my left. Eric has done so many miracles in my life. It's crazy. Oh, um, I'm so proud of I've you. got a love story. I can tell you uh, I've got a missing keys story, just like the last caller, that you yes. would not believe. Uh, my daughter's keys were missing. I, I said to Eric, Eric, are the keys here? And he said, yes, like in my head. And I said, are we ever going to find them? And he said, no. Uh, and I said, why? And he said, because you're not looking in the right place. And so I said, yes. Eric, please. Help me find these keys in a week, or I'm going to have to call locksmith, and it's going to cost me 200 bucks. So oh. me and my husband went out of town four hours to the lake house, and my husband said, oh, my gosh, Lori, you're not going to believe this. Come here and look at my computer backpack. There is my daughter's keys, car keys, sitting, like, wow. pristinely, hanging out of the pocket. So we're leaving the lake house on another trip. And my husband, he's a car guy, he says, oh, no, the engine's making a weird noise. Uh, we better pull over. Oh. And in my head, I'm going, oh, no, oh, no. we're going to have to call a wrecker. They're going to have to take oh. us all the way back to Nashville. It's going to cost me a fortune, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He pulls over. He gets out of the car. He says, we're, we stopped at a store. He said, I got to go in the store for a second. And then I hear Eric in my head say the word lug nut. I'm going, mm-hmm. what? And so my husband comes back out of the house or back out of the store, and I said, Brian, you gotta you gotta check the lug nuts. Uh, Eric just said that to me in my head, and like I said, maybe I'm crazy. So believe it or not, my husband goes around and checks the lug nuts, and do you know on the driver's side, those lug nuts were almost completely off, and that's what was making the noise that he thought oh. was an engine noise. And we would have been on the expressway for four hours, and that wheel would have came off. Oh my God, that would have so. been awful. Well, thank yeah. God you can channel him so well. That is so cool. I, I don't know. I, I I might be crazy. So so really, oh, no, quickly, you're my not, question is: You're not crazy. You're not crazy. Eric obviously I've has ordered, a very close connection to you. So keep I hope it up, so. man. Yeah, yeah I, I love you. Too. So very very quickly, um, I was there in the early beginning with you, Elisa, um, ordering some services. The last bunch of services I had done was February of, let me see, would that be 22? Okay. Uh, the ERPE or whatever. Yeah, and right. um, I just want to know, I've got a lot of stuff going on, believe me. Believe me. Um, do I need, Eric, do I need to order any Atlanta Scalar services? Because it's been almost a year. Eric says, I, I, I mean, he's showing me, okay. like, around, he says, I feel like in March you're going to have a clear knowing that yes, you to order something. He's showing me like around March. For right now, you're okay. okay. 
and so usually March people get month. this uh, a six month tune up. But you know, I always tell people if you if your life is going great, then why? Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so all right, we're gonna we're running into the other thank show, you. guys. So I need all to right. close. Thank you for calling in. And thank you, Denise Ramon at DeniseRamon.com. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you, all you wonderful listeners. Don't give up. Try again next time. Oh. And I love you, Denise. I love you, Eric. And I love all of you guys listening. Please be sure to try out the translation uh, closed captioning and so that you can share it with more non-English speaking peeps. And uh, until next time, bye-bye. Bye. Much love to you. Bye.